Israel uh, attacked uh, Iran uh, in three waves. A very um, well targeted attacks pointed to military infrastructures, mainly with regard to their aerial defense and to their uh, missiles storage sites and missiles uh, manufacturing sites. And um, I think that um, the attacks were very well organized, very effective. And uh, we have to understand that the organizing rationale of the Israeli strategy, by the way, not only with regard to Iran and to these attacks specifically, but generally speaking about the Israeli strategy since uh, October 7th, the idea is um, actually to, um, in each attack, to prepare uh, or to lay the ground for uh, the next attack which means that uh, Israel prepares the, the right conditions uh, in order to assure that the next attack will be much more effective and much more harming. And um, this is exactly what Israel did in these attacks in uh, Iran, because um, Israel takes into consideration that Iran will retaliate on this attack. Uh, and Israel has to prepare itself to the next attack, to the retaliation of the Iranian retaliation. But this time, um, the the coming Israeli attack on the Israeli on the Iranian retaliation will be much more severe and will harm. Um, I think uh, the oil infrastructure as well as uh, the nuclear infrastructures. And in order to do that effectively, Israel has to assure that Iran will not be able to defend itself effectively and will not be able even to attack effectively Israel. This is the reason that Israel attacked, um, first of all, all the ground air uh, uh, defense systems that they have and um, the, um, the missiles capacities that they, that they used to have, because uh, this is the most, uh, I would say, uh, efficient and effective um, tool that they have against Israel the ballistic missiles and the cruise missiles. Um, and uh, therefore, is, uh, Iran will be um, more paralyzed or more limited with regard to its capacities to attack Israel now or in its coming retaliation. And uh, Iran will be much less capable to defend itself in the Israeli retaliation to the Iranian retaliation. And this is exactly, as I said before, what we did with Hamas and what we did with Hezbollah, okay? We, in each in each attack, we are uh, minimizing, we are attacking um, some capacities that will not be effective anymore for the next attack. And then a phase after a phase, we eventually collapse and paralyze Hamas, Hezbollah, and then Iran. Um, I think that... Uh, um, Israel did uh, its utmost efforts in order to be on the same page with the Americans. Uh, it was not an easy task. Uh, as you probably know, the Americans were very reluctant with regard to the expansion of the regional war and even more reluctant with regard to any friction, direct friction with Iran. And they feared that Iran um, will be much more um, active involved uh, in the original war, and therefore they pressured Israel um, to, um, to select very carefully the, the targets. Eventually, we did it together with the Americans. We are fully coordinated with the Americans. I assume that um, our viewers are aware that, that to the fact that uh, uh, yesterday, before the attack, um, uh, F-16 uh, squadron was brought from uh, Germany to the Middle East in order to um, in order to strengthen the American uh, military presence here um, in uh, CENTCOM. And uh, now the Americans even uh, officially uh, warned the Iranians not to retaliate because if they are going to retaliate, and mainly if the retaliation will be um, a meaningful one, uh, then uh, they will find the Americans with the Israelis in the next retaliation, in the next attack. And I think that now the Iranian leadership is sitting on the horn of the dilemma, as we say in the, in the strategic language, okay? And they have to think very carefully about uh, their next move. 
Um, I think that they are in a very problematic strategic position due to the fact that um, there are, I would say, two major pillars, their strategy major pillars, the, uh, the proxies, mainly with regard to Hezbollah and Hamas, uh, and the other one is uh, the nuclear facilities and their missiles, uh, ballistic capacities, um, all of these pillars uh, eventually were weakened dramatically, which means that Iran is much more vulnerable these days, and they know that uh, they have to be very careful with regard to their um, uh, further and coming steps. Otherwise, the regime might find uh, itself in a very concerning situation. Iran will try to find a very creative ways not to retaliate. Uh, they will say uh, that uh, the damages were not severe damages. They will say that they succeeded in intercepting the missiles. They will say that uh, the Israeli Air Force didn't dare to enter um, the sovereign sky of Iran and they did it from, uh, from a distance. And um, they will say that Israel is frightened and the United States is deterred. Um, they will try to, um, to minimize, say, the, the image of uh, the, the attack, the success of the attack. Uh, if they will feel that they are succeeding in convincing their constituency, I assume that they will prefer not to to retaliate because, as I said before, they know what might be the consequences. If they will not succeed in convincing their constituency, they will retaliate. But I think that they will retaliate in a very, I would say, restricted manner because they will try to prevent Israel and the United States from being too aggressive in their retaliation to the Iranian retaliation. But, uh, all the all the assessment uh, are we, we have to take them with a, with a grain of salt, okay? Because uh, we cannot enter to the brains of the supreme leader uh, and the, the military uh, commanders of uh, Iran. We have um, to take into consideration the option that they will behave in a sort of irrational manner with regard to their own interests. Uh, and therefore, we have to be very well prepared. And I think that Israel is very well prepared in the defense and the offense. Uh, I think that um, um, the, the American presence here and um, the international and the regional coalition that still exists um, provide Israel with, uh, with better capacities with regard to the defense. I think that we uh, also did many uh, improvements and uh, we have uh, better capacities today, our own capacities, and we will be able to, um, to defend ourselves from any Iranian attack. Um, and uh, on the other hand, I think that uh, we have improved dramatically our offense capacities and the Iranians uh, have not seen yet all the things that we have in the slide. And um, the most important and crucial issue that at this point, due to the fact that uh, Israel eventually um, complied to the American pressures and took into consideration the American interest, it looks that the Americans are on the same page and therefore the next attack, the next retaliation of the Iranian retaliation will be very uh, effectively supported and backed by the Americans. I cannot assure you that uh, we will see American jets above the Iranian soil, but we will see some other things that the Americans are capable to do. And uh, there is no doubt that the American will fully support the Israeli retaliation, the next retaliation. And I think that um, if there will be a second uh, offense, a second attack, then uh, it will be towards uh, the oil infrastructure and the nuclear infrastructure, and it will be a very severe attack. We have to understand that uh, in the Israeli perception, the Iranian threat is uh, the most severe 
um, threat actually an existential threat because everybody knows that the Iranians uh, really intend to eliminate the state of Israel. Uh, and uh, they are running uh, towards the realization of their nuclear, military nuclear capacities, not in order to bombard Israel with a nuclear bomb. I don't think that they will do something like that uh, because uh, I assume that uh, they know at least according to uh, foreign sources that Israel has uh, the, the capacity of a second strike. Uh, but uh, once they will have nuclear, military nuclear weapon, they will be able to, uh, to be uh, a much bigger bully and dangerous bully here in the neighborhood. And they will be able to attack Israel in a much more aggressive manner and even to use their proxies and to strengthen their proxies and to use them against Israel in a much more aggressive manner. And this is a situation that Israel cannot tolerate. And therefore, the Israeli interest is to assure that Iran will not be able to reach to the threshold of a military nuclear power. And uh, this was a, a very good opportunity for Israel to destroy uh, the entire nuclear facilities of Iran and to destroy some other uh, strategic assets that Iran has in a way that will change dramatically the entire uh, regional uh, system uh, and, and, and will weaken Iran dramatically and will uh, leave Iran deterred in a very effective manner for decades to come. Now, uh, Israel can do it alone, but uh, it is very complicated, very difficult, and therefore Israel prefers to do it together with, with the United States of America. In order to do that with the United States of America, we have to assure that we are on the same page. And therefore, Israel had to do some concessions uh, and uh, not uh, to go, uh, you know, uh, with uh, its original plans. Uh, but I think that uh, what we saw uh, this morning uh, is a very impressive achievement, something that um, indicated that Israel is able to attack in waves, not only in one wave, but in waves. We saw three waves. It means that um, Israel has uh, um, capacities with regard to its air force um, to harm Iran in a very severe manner, because if we are capable to do it in three waves, uh, we have to assume that we are capable to do it in six waves as well. Um, and now when uh, Iran is much more uh, vulnerable with regard to its uh, defense capacities, it will be much easier for the Israeli Air Force. And as I told you before, uh, we have some further capacities which are not necessarily related to our Air Force uh, that we have not used yet. Uh, so I think that it was um, pretty difficult and challenging for Israel to uh, to comply to the American demands, but eventually I'm, I'm pretty glad and satisfied that we have succeeded in doing that. And I think that now we are in a much better condition for the next phases. This attack uh, will affect not only uh, the bilateral uh, level, uh, the Iranian-Israeli uh, uh, level, uh, it will affect uh, the, entire, uh, the entire region and the other fronts as well. Because everybody here in the neighborhood uh, is watching uh, what uh, Israel does. And I think that uh, this is an indication and this is uh, another important layer to the Israeli deterrence towards uh, the other players here in the neighborhood, in the region. And on the other hand, I think that this is a very crucial incentive for Israel, um, uh, Israel's partner, partners here in the region, and I'm talking about, the, of course, the Arab Sunni pragmatic countries, be it the, be it the Gulf countries or uh, Egypt or Jordan uh, and even Morocco uh, and maybe even beyond. Uh, this is an incentive for them to strengthen uh, the, um, the strategic cooperation with Israel, understanding that Israel eventually is the only player here in the entire neighborhood, in the entire region, which dares or who dares to um, to not only to threat Iran, but to, to act and to operate 
against Iran and to deter Iran. And we have to remember that Iran is a very significant and the most significant uh, threat for uh, these uh, partners, these regional partners. And therefore, I think that they understand that uh, Israel is the most reliable and effective uh, partner and ally that they can find. Uh, and uh, I think that this is an incentive for incentive for them to um, to increase to strengthen the strategic cooperation with Israel. And I think that this attack, in a way, um, lays another important layer to the future regional architecture that we have to build here in the region, um, and a, a new architecture that uh, will uh, assure security, stability, and prosperity of uh, the entire region here, and will continue weakening uh, Iran as a revisionist power uh, here in the region.